Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I memorized all of Ohm's Law in about 15 to 20 minutes. So stick around. So how did I memorize Ohm's Law so quickly and in a fun way? I used a memory palace. And you may know the term memory palace from uh, shows like Sherlock Holmes. And all it is is a place where you can store information. And a memory palace could be anything. It could be a walk. Uh, it could be your house. It could be somebody else's house. Anything that you have naturally memorized, you're going to take new information and basically associate it with items within this palace. Okay, so the way that I memorized Ohm's Law is I took four rooms out of my house and associated the formulas with certain things in the room. So I'm gonna show you how we did that now. So what I did first was I'm looking at this Ohm's Law wheel and I wanted to really kind of associate it with an acronym. And because we have P, E, I, and R, and we need to remember those, P for watts, E for volts, I for amps, and ohms for R. And if you take physics, sometimes instead of E for volts, they, they end up using V. So you just have to kind of mess around with this uh, however you need it. And remember, this is how I did it. And the beauty about using a memory palace is you can manipulate it in a way that's gonna be easy for you to remember. So you can use everything that I do in this video to help you remember it, or you can manipulate it to how it works for you. You can personalize. So this is how I did it. First off, I was looking at the P, E, I, and R, and I wanted to kind of make an acronym out of it. And the way that I did it was I spelled out the word R, I, P for ripe. So that allowed me to easily think of a grape. A grape is ripe, so I could think of R, I, P, E, very easily and then I just associate that with a lightning bolt. So the thing about the memory palace is you have to be very visual and imaginative. You have to really kind of link these things together. So whenever you're thinking of a grape and that lightning bolt through it, you're thinking of electricity and then the grape is ripe and now you have R, I, P, and E. Now that I have my acronym for resistance, current, watts, and volts, I can start using my, my memory palace to make use of this acronym. So what I did was assign a room for each letter of this acronym. So R has a room, I has a room, P has a room, and E has a room. And the way that I did it may not be the exact way that you would do it, but this is how I did it, so I wanna show you how this works. For R, R makes me think of the word rear. So I use the word rear to think of the rear of my house. I, the way that it looks by itself, if I kick it and it falls over, it almost looks like a sideways bed. So I use bedroom for the letter I. P makes me think of having to go P. So bathroom is my, is my room for the letter P. And E makes me think of eating, E for eat. And I use kitchen for this room. Now it seems kind of odd, but this works for me. And like I said, you need to figure out what works for you. So like I said, R is the rear of my house. I is a bedroom because I kick over that I and it kind of looks like a sideways stick bed. P for bathroom, because you pee in the bathroom, and E, eating in the kitchen. So these are my four rooms that I use in my memory palace. So now that I have my acronym ripe and I have each letter assigned to a room, I can begin my process of memorizing these formulas. And the thing about formulas are you're gonna see a lot of letters and we have to do the same thing. We have to kind of code it in a way that we're gonna remember it. And letters are really not tangible. So we're gonna do the same thing with the letters. We're gonna make the letters as visual codes so we can remember the letters. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I think about the rear of my house, R for rear, and now we're in resistance, okay? So my first visual is I have a table in the rear of the house. So R, I think the rear. So all I'm gonna do is I'm looking from left to right as I'm kind of going through my memory palace. And outside when I'm at the rear of my house, the first thing that I see when I'm looking at my house is a table, is a patio table, right? So. I'm gonna use that as kind of my, my first peg, I guess you might say. So table's not part of the formula, right? But this is what we're gonna connect everything to. And that, that's what you're gonna see throughout the rest of this. We use one thing that we already have memorized and we're gonna attach something to it. We're gonna attach this formula to it. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first thing I do is I look at my formula right here and I have uh, E over I. And now I have to code this. Right, so for I, I'm gonna use me. This is me, right? So if I think, if I visualize on top of this table, uh, myself, I, this is where I am, right? 
and then I need something to code E. And for that, I have an E-walk. So I'm basically, and the thing is about doing these memory passes, you really have to add some action to it to, to kind of solidify it inside of your memory. So what I imagine myself doing is giving an E-walk a piggyback while I'm dancing on top. And all that tells me is, is E for E-walk is on top of me for I. And that's really it. So I associate, when I look at this table, I see the E, I, or I see myself carrying an E-walk, and it's really easy for me to think of E over I. So the next thing I, that I see in my eye, my mind's eye, in the rear of my house is my door. Okay, this is the formula that we're gonna be working with for my door. And what I see is, I see my door, so that's what I'm gonna associate everything with. And we need E squared. So how are we gonna remember E squared? Well, I imagine two eagles sitting on top of my door, right? And, and you gotta create some movement. So they're flapping their wings, they're looking around and everything. So that's what I'm really seeing, right? And what they end up doing is they poop on a, a panda. <laughs> So what I'm seeing here is E squared, two eagles, E squared, and the action is just the pooping, so that really doesn't matter, but they're pooping on top of a panda right there. I see this, I create that action, and that's how I remember E squared over P. The next thing that I see at the rear of my house is a dog house. So uh, our last formula within R, rear of the house, is gonna be P over I squared. And what I see first is my dog house, and that's what I'm associating everything with. The next thing I see for P is I see Winnie the Pooh. Pooh is on top of the doghouse. And then I see two Irish wolfhounds. So I for Irish, and I see two of them, so I squared. And that makes me think of that. And then I just, my action that I use for this is I just see Pooh pouring honey all over top of the dogs. And that's easy for me to think of P over I squared. So as quick as I can really visualize this, I've already memorized all of resistance. I've, I've memorized uh, with my table, I have my E over I. With my door, I have my E squared, which are my two eagles over top of a panda because they're pooping a, pooping a panda. So that's E squared over P. And then my last one, I have my doghouse, which I associate with everything. And I have P, which is poo, over I squared, which is two Irish wolfhounds. So I what I'm doing is I'm just kind of translating my visual images into what I need. So the next part of our acronym is the letter I. And I obviously makes me think of my bedroom because I kick that I over and it looks kind of like a stick bed. So the first thing that I see in my bedroom is my bed. And we're gonna be working with this formula right in here. Of course, we're working with I for amps. So I see the bed. And on top of that bed, I see an emu. So E, emu, that's what makes me think of that. And then instead of the emu laying an egg, he's actually going to be laying rocket. So, and that's the thing is you have to add that action to it. Otherwise it's not really going to work. However, you might want to think about that. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't care. But what's funny about whenever you're doing this, the weirder, the grosser, the bigger scale it is, the more it's really going to stick in your mind. So really kind of make the, the whole idea of it outrageous. And the more that you can do that, it's going to be easier to remember this. So I think of it E, is my emu over R, and there I have my next formula. The next thing that I see in my bedroom is my closet. So start putting things in, of course, that, that's not my closet, but you know how it works. So what I'm doing is I'm encoding this formula with images. So my first image is going to be penguin, and he's going to be riding a kneel, and he's going, yee-haw, yee yeehaw, right? So what I see right here is P over E, but he's gonna be coming out of the closet, he's like peeking out and he starts riding this eel. And like I said, you really have to see this in order for this to work, but it ends up being P over E. So our next formula is root P over R. And in my mind's eye, I see my dresser in my bedroom, right? It's the kind of the next in line, moving from left to right in my room. So I see my dresser, and out of my dresser, I see this enormous tree just start growing out of it. And for me, whenever I think of a tree, I think of a root, especially when I'm trying to memorize uh, mathematical formulas, tree equals square root for me. And then on top of this tree, I'm gonna see a parrot. And underneath this parrot is gonna be Ron Weasley shooting at him. So P for parrot, and then I see Ron, Ron Weasley, R, Ron Weasley, shooting at this parrot. And so I really try to make a lot of action out of it, and then it's easy for me to think of root 
P over R whenever I'm thinking of this formula. And there we have it for the bedroom. So the bedroom equals I, so everything in my bedroom is gonna be I equals, right? So the bed equals E over R, so Emu over Rocket. And then my uh, closet, I see P over E as penguin over an eel, right? And then for my dresser, I see root parrot over Ron Weasley, root P over R. The next letter in the acronym is gonna be P, and P makes me think of bathroom. So right here, we're gonna be working with P. So any, all these formulas are gonna be P equals. The first thing that I see in my, in my memory palace in my bathroom is a sink. So now I have to think of I times E. Now we haven't run into times, so I'm gonna also code that into my imagery, the, the symbol for times. And what I do is E, I have another eel, and for times, I'm gonna use a watch. So I'm imagining this eel swinging this watch around. You can give him arms, whatever you wanna do in your, in, in your imagination. And I'm gonna imagine that he's smashing an iPad, right? So I see this, this eel for E with a watch, and the watch is a symbol for times. And then he's gonna be hitting this iPad over and over and just smashing it. So that makes it E times I, and that's what we have for the sink. So the next thing that I see in my mind's eye is uh, my toilet. And on this toilet, I see an aardvark. And aardvark actually makes me think of the letter R, even though it starts with something else, it's the sound. So I'm really thinking about the sound R, aardvark, aardvark. So that makes me think of the letter R. And then my aardvark is reading a Times magazine, right? So he's just sitting there and reading it, and that tells me R times. And then he's reading this article and he gets really surprised and his eyes pop out and he's got two eyes. So that tells me uh, R times I squared. So this is the one we're looking at right here or I squared times R. It doesn't matter, of course, with multiplication. So you can kind of mix it up if you want to, but it's R times I squared. That's how I put that together. Now, the last peg in my memory palace for this room is the shower. And what I see is I see two eels kind of hanging on the shower and they're biting at a piece of art. And I just have the Mona Lisa down here to remind me there's a piece of art and art, the word art makes me think of R. So I have E squared over R. And that's our formula for that. And the last formula we have for the bathroom or for the letter P, which is power or watts. And now for the last room in our memory palace, our acronym is E, which makes me think of eat, which makes me think of my kitchen, right? So the first thing that I see is the, my microwave. That's in my kitchen. And then I imagine this reindeer just busting out of my microwave. There he is. Oh, he's cute, isn't he? And then on top of his antlers, I see hanging a watch, which makes me think of times and an eye, a big eyeball. I know it seems weird, but that's the funny thing about it is if it's odd, it's gonna stick, right? So I have R times I, and that gives us this right here, R times I, I times R. Like I said, it doesn't matter with multiplication, however you wanna arrange it and how it works for you, it works the same way, the formula is the same. So that's what we have for the microwave. So the next thing that I see in my kitchen is my stove. And I'm gonna be on top of the stove, so I'm gonna have another eye involved, right? But over top of me is going to be a big waterfall, but the waterfall is going to made of, be made of uh, pee. So I see, yes, a big waterfall splashing on top of me. Uh, I know it's gross, but it's easy to remember because it's so nasty. And I have P over I, and that gives us our formula there. And so the last formula that we have in the kitchen, actually the last formula for all of Ohm's Law, is my refrigerator. My refrigerator is my peg. So then I see a massive tree growing out of my refrigerator, and on this tree is Peter Pan, right? So now we have root P. And then Peter is actually holding this huge watch, and out of this watch breaks a big rhino. So this is my formula, my visual formula, for this, and I have my tree, which equals root, and then Peter is P, watch times rhino R. So that gives us root P times R. And then after that, you have memorized all of Ohm's law. Now it's way harder and takes much longer to explain this to you than what it will take for you to actually build up your own imagery. Now the big things that you gotta remember is this, you gotta make it very vivid. You have to make things larger than life. 
you have to make things that have uh, you have to give action to the image and you just have to code it yourself what you create is going to be easier for you to remember than what somebody else creates for you so this might be harder for you to remember than it is for me to remember because i'm the one who created this give this a try see how fast you can memorize ohm's law in this way and it's a way funner way to memorize ohm's law i hope this helped you guys and if you want to support me i have a book on amazon and i'll show you that right now and uh, i appreciate you guys watching hopefully this helps and if it did please write a comment and uh, tell me what you think all right and let me know if you'd like to see another uh, how to memorize something uh, video. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.